Hey y'all, it's Molly with Mini Acres Farm and I wanted to share with you my seed shopping adventure. This is going to be part one because I didn't manage to go through every website that I had thought I would make it through. This took a lot longer than I expected and I only managed to get through three websites. But I want to share with you all of the websites that I have up and then let you know what I actually did buy. He has already helped me so much today. Okay, so these are in no particular order, but I'm excited to add some that were suggested to me by fellow YouTubers, and I can't think off the top of my head right now, but I'll put her name on the screen. I'll also be leaving links to these companies as well so that you can check them out. So the first one that I wanna talk about is Mary's Heirloom Seeds, and I actually found some really good deals um, on this website. There, it, I would say it's maybe half and half of things that I wanted that she had or that were out of stock. The next one I want to share is Little Shop of Seeds. This one was recommended by a fellow YouTuber and I'll put her name on the screen because it's escaping me right now. Little Shop of Seeds um, is where I first made an order because all of his seeds are 55 cents a pack. Can you stop shaking everything? You have toys. No! <laughs> Stop! So, um, Little Shop of Seeds has all their packets are 55 cents a packet. And he doesn't have a massive selection, but for 55 cents a piece, um, I ordered one of everything. I just need... Get that out of your mouth! Can I have a moment's peace? So, I highly recommend Little Shop of Seeds, and I will share with you what I got from him. So another one that was recommended is Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. This one I didn't get a chance to really dig in and look at everything, but it looks like they have stuff in stock. So Tomato Grower Supply Company, um, they have more than just tomatoes. It looks like they have a lot of stuff in stock too. The next one is Johnny's Seeds, and I didn't get to checking out this one. Um, it's so much. It's so much to dig through all of the seeds and look at everything. They have seeds in stock. Ow! They have... Stop! Haas Tools was next, and they have seeds in stock. Baker Creek Seeds, which is rareseeds.com. I didn't even look because this... I get in so much trouble. They have the most beautiful pictures, the most beautiful catalog, and you just want to order all of the things. So I didn't even look, but let's... Ow, stop! So the, And they have seeds in stock. The next one is MI Gardener, and the update on their website is that they will have their seeds in stock um, middle of November or December. And one reason that I love in my gardener, if you watched my going through my seed stash video, I shared a lot of seeds that came from in my gardener um, because their seeds are 99 cents a pack. The last one that I really want to shop from is Botanical Interests because that is also another place I got a lot of seeds and they also do have seeds in stock. Fruition Seeds is one, um, is one that I like but I haven't ordered from them. Um, and they seem to have stuff in stock as well. Much, much, much later. Okay, so we're going to go over what I ordered, and then also, here's my plan. So, looking at our budget, I ordered what I was comfortable with ordering this month, and then my plan is next month to shop at MI Gardener when they get restocked, Botanical Interests, and... Possibly Baker Creek and Haas Tools as well. So let's look at what I ordered. One reason that it took me so long to even place an order is as I was looking at seeds, what I was doing is basically going through any seed that I knew I wanted. I just threw it in my cart on the three different websites. And then afterwards, I compared prices. Because if all three of the companies had the same seeds I was looking for, then obviously I would want to go with whoever has the best price on that. And then that helped me narrow it down as to what I was going to order from each company and also continue to be able to take advantage of like free shipping and stuff like that. So, Little Shop of Seeds are the one that is 55 cents a pack. So... <laughs> Keep that in mind when I tell you all of the things that I ordered because 
It might seem insane, but at 55 cents a pack, I made out like a bandit. These are the seeds that I ordered. Bush Lima Beans, Crimson Clover, Crimson Giant Radish, Detroit Dark Red Beet, Early, early Sun Glow Sweet Corn, Green Globe Artichoke, Italian Basil, Jalapeno, Jewel Mix Nasturtium, Large Cherry Tomato, Little Finger Carrot, Mary Washington Asparagus, Something I Can't Pronounce, Asian Cabbage, and Purple Top Turnips, and Radicchio. <laughs> We're not done yet. Rainbow Swiss Chard, Romano Bush Beans, Straight Eight Cucumber, Sugar Baby Watermelon, White Icicle Radish, American Flag Leeks, Black Beauty Zucchini, Blue Lake Bush Bean, Bodacious Sweet Corn, Boston Pickling Cucumber, Brussels Sprouts, California Wonder Sweet Pepper, Cayenne Hot Pepper, Congo Watermelon, Golden Acre Cabbage, Green Arrow Shelling Pea, Hishiko Bunching Onion, Honeydew Melon, Ponderosa Beefsteak Tomato, Raise Something Pepper. Um, I think it's a pepper that Ray himself actually like hybridized and I want to say that's the one that he said this would be the last year he would be selling those seeds. So I wanted to try them. Sweet banana pepper and an edible flower mix. Okay, that took two pages. But it was 28 bucks counting shipping. So that wasn't too bad for that many packs of seeds, $4.50 for shipping, and it's already on its way. I already got my shipping confirmation less than less than 24 hours. When I was comparing between Trade Winds and Mary's Heirloom, um, I was oh, some of them were were pretty equal. Some of them might have both had the same thing for 250 a pack. So I wanted to be mindful of the fact that Trade Winds has free shipping over $25. So I wanted to be sure that I hit that $25 mark so I could get the free shipping. Another thing that kind of helps keep me in check a little bit with picking varieties of things is I am on the hunt for varieties of specific types of fruits and vegetables that are supposed to grow really well in my climate. So if I found something like that, it would be a no-brainer that I want to buy it. So here's the list of things that I got from Trade Winds. 42-day tomatoes, Arkansas Traveler tomatoes, which are supposed to do really well with heat and humidity, Berry's Crazy Cherry Tomatoes, Beef Steak Tomato, Delicious Tomato. Those were only a dollar. Of course I was going to get them. And the Beef Steak Tomatoes were 75 cents. You can't pass that up. Gardener's Delight Tomato, which was a cherry tomato. Homestead Tomato. Those were a dollar. The geese hear me. The window's open. Cassava, or some people say cassava. But cassava is a root vegetable that grows really well in um, warm climates. I'm excited to find seeds for that. Marconi pepper, mini bell pepper mix, Thai basil, rattlesnake pole beans, gloriosa daisies. So it's not my fault that Flower Hill Farm basically has me now feeling like I actually can dream of being a flower farmer and selling flowers. And so I'm trying to just dip my toe in and try out some flowers that are pretty easy to grow and not terribly expensive and just see what happens. Shagoan turnips, Tabasco peppers, Texas early grano onion, which they're a variety that's supposed to grow well in the south. Tigger melons, because they're pretty. Watermelon radishes, same thing, because they're pretty yellow pear tomatoes, and California giant zinnia mix. Now, from Mary's Heirloom Seeds, I got wildflowers that are a Gulf Coast mix. Stop drinking my water. She has a mix of wildflowers for all the regions. I could not not buy a Gulf Coast wildflower mix. Lemon Queen Sunflower, uh, Lupine. Again, this is 100% um, Nicole at Flower Hill Farm's fault. I got another pack of of borage because that did really well. I ordered a toothache plant because I like medicinal plants. Lime basil, lemon basil. I found comfrey seeds. I've been wanting to buy comfrey and there is a YouTube, there is a YouTube channel called Edible Acres and they also sell bare root plants and some other things seasonally. Right now they're completely out of stock. I had been planning to buy some of his comfrey when he separates them and he's out right now and so the fact that I could find seeds even though it might take longer for them to get established comfrey is supposed to be really good to grow around any of your plants as a nitrogen fixer and also to use for mulch 
and to use for compost, to use for compost tea. You can feed it to your animals. Um, it seems like it's kind of just this magical plant. Georgia rattlesnake watermelon. Moringa seeds. Again, I found seeds for something I've been wanting to grow. Moringa is supposed to be, um, it's a tree that is considered, well, at least now he's harassing the bunnies instead of me. Moringa is a superfood, and I keep seeing these people that are growing it, and apparently um, it should grow really well in my climate, so check your climate and see. It might be something that you can grow in the spring and summer, but you have to, you know, pot it and bring it inside for fall, but it's supposed to be um, a superfood. So, it was $1.99 for 15 seeds. I bought them. Early purple sprouting broccoli. I just saw a video where Jess from Roots and Refuge said sprouting broccoli is good for warmer climates, so I bought it. Early white Vienna kohlrabi. American purple top rutabaga. Pink ox heart tomato. I think I mentioned that those were the ones that grew the biggest for me. They were just really fun to grow. Floridade tomato. Aunt Molly's ground cherry. I don't think I've ever told you guys how I tried pineapple ground cherries and they were disgusting. I kept trying to eat them. I thought, well, maybe it's not ripe yet. And every single time I ate one, I could not, I couldn't do it. I did not like the taste of it. I, I want to like them. So I'm hoping maybe the Aunt Molly's ground cherry tastes different than the pineapple. And also because it's got my name in the name, why wouldn't I order that? Ladyfinger Southern Peas. Ladyfinger Peas are one of my absolute favorite peas. They're tedious and tiny and it takes a lot to make a handful, but they're so good. They're so worth it. I got some Ragged Jack Kale. I got Red Malabar Spinach, Charleston Wakefield Cabbage, and Pak Choi Cabbage. That Pak Choi Cabbage was $1.50. So I'm pacing myself. Now with the seeds that I already have and then when these seeds come in, I will go through my seed stash again and see what I actually need, <laughs> need or want to buy the next time that I order. This seems like a lot. And maybe if you have a smaller growing space, it's very overwhelming to look at someone who just bought 100 packs of seeds and try to imagine where you're going to put them all um, or how you would possibly grow them all. For one thing, it's food security to just have an abundance of seeds and if you take care of them well, they should still germinate from year to year. And I will have two new long raised beds in the spring, plus I will have space in my market garden. I'll probably have at least three really long beds that I'll be able to start gardening those in the spring as well. So because I have the space, I'm just gonna justify that buying more seeds is better to be prepared to use the space, right? So let me know, what are you guys ordering for spring? What do you wanna plant? What worked really well for you? Or what's something new and fun that you wanna try? And stay tuned for the next installment of Molly Goes Crazy Buying All the Seeds. Bye y'all.